The belief that there are humans who turn into wild, predatory beasts is a worldwide myth. Such beasts include the tiger in India, the jackal and leopard in Africa, the bear in Russia and North America, and of course, the wolf in Europe. A werewolf, or lycanthrope, in European folklore and mythology is a person who changes into a wolf, either by purposefully using magic or by being placed under a curse. That at least is the sort of description you'll get if you ask the average European what a werewolf is. Most people focus on the exterior marks of the creature, the shape and so on. That, however, misses the essence. I instead ask who the werewolf is. This introduces some less investigated aspects of the subject, unrelated to magic or shape-shifting abilities. From this perspective, a werewolf may be defined as a mentally disturbed person, socially isolated, inclined to violence towards other people, children and animals, used to cannibalistic practices, and, as a general rule, a feral and brutal murderer. I'm Jeff Carr. Uh, I'm now a journalist, but 20 years ago I was a wildlife biologist. And in, pic in particular, I concentrated on studying social carnivores. And there are several species of social carnivore, but perhaps the most famous, the most notorious, and the most written about, and the most mythological is the wolf. We are now standing in one of the last places in Western Europe where wolves still live, the Abruzzo Mountains in central Italy. There aren't many left, but there are still some. And that is a testament to the continued antagonism between wolves and people, in which wolves have gradually lost and gradually been driven back into the last remaining bits of forest. The reason for that is the similarity between wolves and people. We are both pack animals. We live, at least humanity lived until agriculture was invented, in small groups who make their living by hunting, who have a strong hierarchy, a strong sense of social identity, um, a reasonably monogamous attitude to the opposite sex, strong sense of territory as well. For all of these reasons, a wolf pack and a human hunter-gatherer band are not that dissimilar from each other. As is often the way uh, in nature, two species who occupy similar niches come into conflict with each other. And humanity and wolves probably were in conflict from the beginning because they were so, uh, seeking the same prey. But when men started to domesticate animals and bring them into farms, the conflict became acute because the wolves found it easy to attack domestic stock, which was fatter and lazier and less able to run away. But the fact that they were able to do so at all was because of their pack social nature. A wolf by itself is a fairly formidable animal, but not enormously so. It is the size of a large dog. It has sharp teeth, but a determined large mammal could easily fight it off. It is only by collaborating that wolves are able to hunt large animals, such as deer, and also large stock animals, such as cattle and sheep. And oh, for that reason and that reason alone, um, wolves have been persecuted by people. As a result of that persecution, mythologies have arisen. Occasionally, it is likely that people were attacked directly by wolves. But the fact that wolves were big and bloody and toothy predators insinuated itself into the human psyche and resulted in large numbers of myths about the big bad wolf, the Red Riding Hood myth, if you like. For a long time in prehistory, man and wolf have been hunting rivals. Sometimes, too, men were the prey rather than the predators. Indeed, our most primal fear is to be eaten alive, as the excessive movies based on this fear are, such as Aliens, Jaws, Jurassic Park. In prehistoric Europe, the most fatal, deadly and frequent encounters that people had with animals were not with sharks, dinosaurs or aliens from space, but with packs of wolves. For even a couple of wolves could easily overwhelm isolated unarmed women and children. 
But besides fearing wolves, men have always admired them, and for many reasons. Their hunting ability, their refined intelligence, their social life cooperation, hierarchy, pack protection and monogamy. It is this combination of fear and fascination that makes the wolf an ideal model for a supernatural creature. Nevertheless, it is just a model, for there are some things that do not fit properly into the werewolf myth. The wolf is a pack hunter and a daylight predator. A werewolf is an absolutely lone hunter and often depicted as a night stalker. Quite the opposite of a real wolf. These remarkable differences lead to the next question. Why should we call someone a werewolf when he or she actually does not act or behave like a wolf? Perhaps the wolfish component of the modern werewolf myth belongs to something else, something ancestral. The ability and the will to hunt and feed upon human flesh, the primitive ancestral fear. If you were poor, ignorant and superstitious, and living in the Middle Ages, what would you call somebody who wanders at night killing and eating people? A werewolf indeed. In our time, we would call them a cannibal serial killer, and lycanthropy is always connected to cannibalism. The modern concept of werewolf is, in fact, relatively recent. It was only about from the 9th or 10th century onwards that the werewolf became a fully evil creature. Humans had such a long time, tens of thousands of years, to watch and learn from wolves' habits that, as I said before, they often developed admiration and respect for the most effective pack hunter on earth. Roman civilization effectively reduced the danger related to wolf attacks for centuries. But when the empire collapsed, around the 5th century AD, barbarian tribes broke into the heart of Europe. Those tribes were coming from wild, uncivilized regions, carrying for some more recent experience of wolf attacks and, at the same time, used to brutal costumes and habits. Along with these facts, the Catholic religion was growing in power and influence. Earlier traditions and beliefs were converted to the church's needs were blamed and destroyed. The barbarians' brutal costumes ignited a new life in the werewolf myth, which had largely been forgotten under the Roman Empire. The Empire itself had indeed adopted a wolf as a symbol of its power. Brutal murderers and mentally disturbed individuals were probably quite common during and after the barbarian invasions. I believe these individuals are the origin of the modern werewolf myth while religion and superstition, and sometimes auto-suggestion, made for the rest. Popular fantasy added shape-shifting abilities to justify cases of cannibalism or dismembering, or simple murders or even accidents, where the victims were la later partially devoured by wild animals. The choice of the wolf thus perfectly fits into the scene, as it is the only carnivore capable of hunting men. Humanity's prime fear emerged and spread fast through Europe. Serial killers are common in our highly civilized society, and cannibalism is a distinctive deviation of some types of these killers. The most effective and feral. It does sound obvious that such kinds of mentally disturbed individuals were more common in previous ages due both to uncivilized costumes and barbarian influence. It is also interesting to note that traditional werewolf tales and reports refer to males only. Males are physically stronger and much more inclined to violence towards other males, women and children. The latter two groups being preferred victims because of their weaknesses. These are peculiar habits of most serial killers as well and among all known serial killers, 90% are men. Historical literature reports several examples of supposed werewolf cases, among which the Stubb case is the most documented. 
Peter Stubb was a German farmer sentenced to atrocious torture and death after he confessed his insatiable appetite for children. He killed, devoured, and in a few cases raped 13 children, including his own son and two pregnant women and their fetuses. He was executed in 1589. In 1512, artist Lucas Cranach drew what is considered the first werewolf in art. It shows a bearded man devouring children in a bloodbath, in a feral posture. There is no evidence of shape-shifting marks at all, and that is quite strange considering the author lived in the werewolf's golden age. <laughs>